Unit 11, Part 5. Okay, so um, quantify negation equivalences um, and the QN rules. QN rules, again, those are rules which you'll be able to cite in a proof. You'll be able to write QN as you transform some formulas into other formulas to equivalent. The QN rules and the Unit 12 CQN rules are like the replacement rules where the formula, you've always got pairs of formulas, so the replacement rules, unit eight ones, bottom half of your inside cover. Like them, these rules um, are going to have pairs of formulas and the two pair, uh, um, in each pair, the two formulas are logically equivalent. Okay? Um, so for every um, negated, every negated existential statement, is equivalent to a universal statement, right? So if I say Australians don't exist, the top one, we translated that as it's not the case that there exists an X such that X is Australian, right? That's a way to have Australians don't exist. You should hear that when I say that, it's equivalent to saying um, everything is not Australian, right? So first step here is just recognizing the equivalence between these two statements. Uh, Australians don't exist, well, there are no Australians. Oh, so everything is not Australian, right? Yes, those are equivalent. <coughs> Similar here, not, this is gonna be, this not everything is Australian, it's the negated universal, not the case for all X, X is Australian, not everything is Australian, that's gonna be equivalent to what? Not everything is Australian, so there exists something which is not, Austra which is not Australian, right? Not everything is Australian, that there's, then there is something which is not Australian, right? So that there exists an X such that it's not the case that X is Australian. Right, that's, right, so these should be next to each other, but that's equivalent to that. Formula-wise, that's equivalent to that. These are both translations. Those are both legitimate translations of the original sentence. There are, again, okay, that was the same as that. Um, some things are not Australian, right? Which we had, there exists an X such that not AX. Some things are not Australian. There exist some things which are not Australian. If some things are not Australian, then if some things are not Australian, it's not the case that everything is Australian, right? So again, just sound those out in your head to you convince yourself that those are logically equivalent, right? Some things are not Australian, so not if some things are not Australian, then not everything is Australian. Yeah, if not everything is Australian, some things are not Australian, right? Find the same thing for this one. Everything is not Australian. For all X, not AX. Everything is not Australian. So, um, everything is not Australian, so, there's, there does not exist an X which is Australian. If everything is not Australian, for all X, not AX, everything is not Australian, then there does not exist an X such that X is Australian. Right? Or, again, you can read this as nothing. And accordingly, when you see nothing in English, you should be translating as this. Nothing. It's not the case that there exists an X. Nothing is the denial of existence. That was the big uh, eureka, the great discovery of what quantifiers could express. Um, see the exchange between uh, Heidegger and Carnap at uh, Davos. They were talking about the metaphysical significance of nothing and Carnap thought, mm, we don't need to do metaphysics about nothing because Frege has shown us that we can express nothing as the negation of the existential quantifier. Anyway, um, okay, so uh, there's a general pattern that emerges and the general pattern is the quantifier negation equivalence rules. So again, these are rules which you can cite in a proof, right? And they are um, just like the uh, replacement rules from Unit 8, right? The bottom half of your inside cover of your claim to text, um, where the left-hand side and the right-hand side are logically equivalent formulas, okay? Um, so these are replacement rules. You can use them in proofs to transform formulas into logically equivalent formulas, but there's a rule for there. Um, there's uh, a, 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 a general rule for this, these translations, and they are these ones. They have them here on 
221, quantify negation equivalence rules, 221 of your text. Uh, she presents them in terms of uh, phi and psi Greek letters, but I've got them here just in terms with our simple predicate letters, fx. Just, just, she has it because it can be any, the formula can be of any complexity, right? So the phi's on her page, 221, can be replaced with a propositional function, no matter how complex, right? fx or gx, whatever it is, right? And that's going to be the link between the QN rules of unit 11 and the CQN categorical quantifying negation equivalence rules of unit 12. But anyway, it's just, the, the thing they're easy to understand here. Okay, so in general, whatever this predicate is, you think this can be something complex, right? Not, it's not the case that for all x, fx is equivalent to their existent x, which is not fx, right? And I want you to make sure you, you know, rewind the video if you have to, but make sure you listen to it until you hear the equivalence. Not everything is f means something is not f, okay? That's how you read that. Not everything is f, not the case that for all x, x is f, not everything is f, means there's something which is not f. Yeah, yeah, that's, those are saying the same things, right? Uh, not, there does not exist an f, there are no f's, means everything is not f. That's how you should be reading these now. There's nothing, there does not exist an x such that x is f, there are no f's, means everything is not f. Okay, these two are a bit more complicated. This, not everything is not f. Right? It's not the case that for all x, x is not f. Not everything is not f, so something is f. If not everything is not f, then something is f. Yes, those are equivalent. Um, there is nothing which is not f. It's not the case that there exists an f, sorry, there is, it is not the case that there exists an x such that x is not f. There's nothing which is not f means everything is f. If there's nothing that isn't f, everything is f. Okay, and the general uh, rule for these translations is this. So take this away with you. And remember this bit. As we go, so uh, let me say more generally. When, you, when will you be using these QN rules? Okay, in the context of proofs, once again, lesson of unit 14 coming up will be that uh, only formulas that are in quantifier form can be used with the rules governing the use of quantifiers, the instantiation and generalization rules that we introduced to in year 15, right? So you'll have proofs, and a lot of your proofs will um, have formulas um, in... Okay, so just imagine we're doing a proof now, right? So we've got our vertical line. You're going to have formulas like this. Um, see that? Okay, so say that's a premise, right? You've got that premise. What you will be grasping about this premise is that it is not in quantified form, which means you cannot instantiate from this. So what you usually do with any given formulas which, in, which, are, uh, which involve quantifiers, you will want to, tra you want to transform them such that they are, you know, if, they need to be, if they're not already in quantifier form, you need to transform them by the QN rules or the CQN rules. You need to transform them by these QN rules into formulas that are in quantifier form such that you can then instantiate from them. Right? Uh, that's how you're going to be using these rules. So you're going to look at this and you're going to ask yourself, okay, you're going to say this. I can only instantiate from this formula if it's in quantified form. Is it in quantified form? There are two conditions for a formula to be in quantified form. One, it has to begin with a quantifier. Two, the scope of the initial quantifier has to go to the end of the formula. So does this formula satisfy those conditions? Does it satisfy the first condition? Does it begin with a quantifier? No. It is a negation. Its first symbol is a negation, and very importantly, very importantly, to very important for you to grasp, negations are not in, are not quantifier statements. This is a negation, and thus is not a quantifier statement. It's not in quantifier form. Okay, 
So you'll see this and say, oh no, it's not in quantifier form. I have to transform it by a QN or CQN rule. I'm saying, I'm saying QN, that's one justification you'll have on the side. The other one after unit 12, we'll learn the CQN, categorical quantifier negation equivalence. You'll be transforming it such that the formula you get after the translation is in quantified form. And why are you doing that? So that you can instantiate it. So that you can use the rules of universal or existential instantiation. And then you'll do truth functional reasoning. And then generalization rules, usually at the end, should get to a conclusion. And that's how a lot of proofs are going to go. Okay, so that's why you need to know these rules. Because in the context of proofs, your manipulation of the premises, you're going to have to manipulate the premises so that the um, result of those manipulations of the premises are formulas in quantified form that you can instantiate from. Okay, that's why you need them. Okay, so what you've got to remember here in these translations is, so usually you're going to be, usually, not 100% of the time, but usually you'll be going from um, a negated quantifier to the opposite, right? Because you want to get it in quantified form. So in these cases, that's always left to right here. But these are, these are like replacement rules, you can go the other way. Uh, but look what happens. Okay, so the motto or the, the catchphrase is everything changes. More elaborately, there are three things that change as you go from left to right. Okay, first, one, two, three things change. So count them out. First thing, the quantifier changes. In each case, it's universal going to an existential or an existential going to universal. So in each case, you change, whenever you're using a QN or a CQN, the quantifier is changing. Universals go to existentials, existentials go to universals. Okay, that's the first change. The second thing is, if the quantifier is negated on one side, it is unnegated on the other side. So notice that's true here. You've got not x becomes there exists an x. Negation is gone and the quantifier changes. That's two things. Right, notice it's also true of these ones. The universal goes to the existential. Here the quantifier is negated. Here it's unnegated. Here the quantifier is negated. Over here it's unnegated. Right? So those are two of the three things that change. Quantifier changes. If the quantifier is negated on one side, it's unnegated on the other side. If it's unnegated on one side, it becomes negated on the other side. Right? That's the second thing to say. Third thing, if the propositional function is unnegated on one side, it becomes negated on the other side. If the propositional function is negated on one side, it's unnegated on the other. So quantifier changes and negation is added or removed from the quantifier. Right? And three, a, a negation is added or removed from the propositional function. All those three things change. Okay, so that's the rules of quantifier negation, negation equivalences. Uh, and we'll be seeing more complex applications of this in the CQN rules. But you will need to know them as well. Um, you'll, be near, you'll need to be able to apply them um, to even get going in the proofs. So they are, they are essential to being able to pass the exam. All right. Uh, maybe that'll do for unit 11. I think so.